So in this video, we're going to continue our study of transformations and talk about multiple transformations of the square root function. So remember, we started off talking about the square root parent function, which has all of these following characteristics. All other square root functions are transformations of this original parent function. Um, so all other square root functions will have the form f of x equals a times the square root of b times x minus h plus k, where a, b, h, and k are constants. So there are three types of transformations. We have shifts, which are translations, so moving left or right or up or down, stretches and compressions, and we have reflections. So notice that when we're talking about a, b, h, and k, if you have values on the outside of the radical, those will be vertical changes. If you have values inside the radical, those will be horizontal changes. Um, if you have multiplication, that's going to be a stretch or a compression. And if you have addition or subtraction, that's going to be a translation. So let's look at this example. What happens when we have g of x equals 4 times the square root of x plus 2 minus 6? So let's look at each one of these numbers one at a time and figure out the transformation. So we have a 4. The 4 is on the outside, so that is a vertical change. Um, it is multiplying the function. And 4 is bigger than 1, so we have a stretch. So the first change will be a vertical stretch. Now we have this plus 2. So I'm going to start over with my flow chart. I have a plus 2, which is inside my radical. So that's horizontal. It's being added or subtracted. Um, the plus 2 tells me that I have a shift left, right? So if I have that plus sign, that is going to be moved left two units. And now finally, I have this minus six, which is on the outside of my radical, right? So I have a minus six, which is on the outside, so that's vertical. It's added or subtracted, and it is less than zero, so I have a shift down. So shift down six units. So we can confirm this by graphing both functions. Notice that the transform function in red is vertically stretched shifted to the left two units and down six units. So now let's try this new function. We have g of x equals one-fourth the square root of x minus three minus two. So the first transformation we have, that one-fourth that is on the outside, is a vertical change. It's multiplying the radical, and the one-fourth is less than one, so we have a vertical compression. Now the next value we have is a minus three. So let's start over with our chart. The minus three is inside, so it's gonna be a horizontal change. It's being added or subtracted. And I see a minus sign, so that's gonna be shifted right. So it's gonna be shifted right three units. Now finally, we have the minus two on the outside. So the minus two is on the outside, which is a vertical change. We have an addition or subtraction, which means that it's moving down. So we shift down two units. So we can confirm these changes by graphing both functions. Notice that the transform function in red is actually vertically compressed, moved to the right three units and down two units. So what happens if f of x equals the square root of x is transformed to g of x equals negative 2 square root of x plus 8? So the first one I have, I have a negative 2. But that negative 2 is actually going to have two effects, right? The negative 2 is on the outside, so it's vertical. It's being multiplied. Um, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, which is bigger than 1, so we know that is going to have a vertical stretch. However, remember, it's not just going to be one effect because it is a negative 2. Right? So we have this additional effect, which is our reflection. So this is also going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so we actually have two effects from having that negative 2 in front. Now we have this plus 8, right? We have a plus 8, which is on the outside. Once again, it is a vertical change. Um, the plus 8 is being added, and it is bigger than 0, so we're going to have a shift up. Eight units. 
If we graph both functions, we can see the transform function in red is vertically stretched, it's reflected over the x-axis, and it is moved up eight units. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try this problem on your own. So we have three numbers that are changing the uh, graph of our function. We have a three, minus seven, and a plus five. The three on the inside is gonna be a horizontal compression. The minus seven on the inside is gonna be a shift right, seven units. And the plus five on the outside will be a shift up five units. So we can confirm these by looking at the graph. You can see that the red transform function is moved up five units, right seven units, and it is vertically compressed, or sorry, horizontally compressed. So in summary, remember our square root transformations, if we have changes outside the radical, those are gonna be vertical changes. Changes inside the radical are gonna be horizontal changes. Multiplication is gonna be a stretch or compression, and addition or subtraction is a translation. Multiplying by a negative number is going to indicate a reflection.